I'm going to map out four major actionable events that are all part of your trading poker deck. These four major actionable events should basically make up the core of all of your activity in the market, meaning that these four things represent, should represent the what you consider to be trading opportunities in the market. They, these four things don't cover every opportunity, but I am telling you they cover like 90% of the opportunities in the market, these four things. I'm going to draw them out for you, but I want you to grab the four things in your deck, if you will, as well. So the first thing, as we know, the major thing is the elephant bar. Now, you'll have a bull elephant one and a bear elephant one, right? I'm just going to operate from the bull side. I always teach from the bull side, but remember that everything is applicable in reverse as well on the short side. There is no difference whatsoever. So your first major actionable event is an elephant bar. Okay. This will represent, guys, by the way, about 65% of all of your trades. All trades in the market, 65% of all trades stem from some version of an elephant bar. Now, there's more than one version, all right, but 65% of your actionable events will occur from one or more of the versions, from those, those versions of elephant bars. So... Guys, in reality, you can make your whole living in the markets just based off of elephant bars. It's enough. 65% of all trades are elephant bar based. That should be written down. All right? You should make a note of that. Okay. The second major event is your tail bar. Now, remember, there's a bull version. There's a bottoming tail bar, and the bear version is a topping tail bar. There's, there's different versions of an elephant bar. There are different versions of a tail bar as well. I'm going to stick with the main one here where you have a green top. Okay? So it's a tail bar with a green top. Solid green bar, elephant bar, tail bar, both a bottoming tail bar with a small green body. Now listen to me carefully. A tail bar is not just any bar with a wick on it. This is a very common mistake where some of you are still calling any bar with a wick a tail bar. No, a tail bar is more special. It's, it, you have to be strict in your definition of what it is to receive the power that it has. You can't call... You know, it's disrespectful to the bottoming tail bar and the topping tail bar when you call and include every bar with a wick um, in, it, in its category and you label it that. Let me give you the specifics. If the tail does not represent about 85% of the entire bar, then it's really not a tail bar. The bar, what makes a tail bar powerful is the tail is the majority of what you see. The body is the minority. The body is the small part of the bar. All right? And so please keep that in mind. We've got a, a bottoming tail bar. The majority of the bar is tail, and the body is small, and the body is green in this instance. Now remember, there are different types, but we're going to focus on the main type, the green box at the top, small the majority of the bar is tail. All right, that's your second one. Your third one, your third actionable event, which is in your deck, you should grab these, bull 180, okay? This is where you have a red elephant, the quintessential bull 180 is two elephants. Make a note of that. The quintessential bull 180 is two elephants. Now you can have baby ele you can have baby bull 180s, and there's different varieties, but we're going to stick with the main one, the purest one of all, which is red elephant bar, immediately reversed 
by an even bigger, more powerful green elephant bar. All right? I want you to pull that out of your deck. And last but not certainly not least, red bar ignored. It's like one red bar and it immediately gets ignored. So the quintessential RBI, red bar ignored, the quintessential one, the pure one, the major one, the, the main one, is that you have strength to the left. So you have something strong to the left that immediately experiences a pause, but the pause is small. The best is when that pause is in the upper portion of the strength to the left of it. All right? And then, boom, immediately the next bar continues what the first bar was doing in the first place. It's almost like the stock took a pit stop, grabbed a little sip of water, and then went right back on to its race. You know, a quick little pit stop and continue. These are your four things, and your RBI will happen about, all right, 60, 65% elephant. You got 15% pure, the pure ones, all right, 15%. Um, that, these two right there get you, it's crazy, right? It gets you to 80%, all right? <clears throat> you have 5%, and then you have 10%. Those are the real numbers. So what does that give you? That gives you freaking 95%. That's crazy. 95% of all of your actions, should you should be able to name most of your actions by saying, I did an elephant bar play. I did a bull 180 play. I did an RBI play. I did a tail bar play. You guys got this so far? I prep, I would like you to try to pull this out of your, pull these out of your deck. Now, in your deck of cards, when you have these four things, it explains what it is on the back. You have to know how to enter these things when they occur. When they show up to you, with, when they show up for you, and they show up in the right location, you've got to know how to enter them. And so there are two entry ways. There's confirmation and there's anticipation. So with Accompanied with each one of these cards, you have two entry methods for each one. They should be grouped together. So your elephant bar is one card, and then the confirmation entry is another card, and the anticipation entry of an elephant is another card. So it should be three together, right? Elephant is the event. Confirmation is one way to enter the event. Anticipation is another way of entering the event. We're not going to talk about location today, but yes, location is important. You need these to show up at the right location for them to really have the supportive. They're powerful, but they need support to make them fully glorious, right? They need the position support or the location support. Like the way I'd like to look at these is that they're like the homes. These are the, these are the beautiful homes, but if they're not on the right property, in the right neighborhood, in the right zip code, they don't get the real true value that they should get. So, so now that we have these four things and the percentages of trades that they will make in your overall activity, I want to drill down into the the entries, confirmation and anticipation. I need you to understand these thoroughly. All right, so I'm going to erase this, take a snapshot, take a picture, whatever you need to do because it's going to disappear. Do it now. Okay, good. Now let's go over the elephant entry. Here's your elephant bar. You're assuming it's occurring in a great location. You want to buy it, you can buy it. 
any subsequent bar that takes out the high of your elephant bar. Boom. That second bar is going past the high of the elephant bar. If it's a little tail bar, then it's here. So any bar that trades one penny, guys, that's all you need, one penny above the high of your elephant bar. If the high of your elephant bar is $40, then your entry is $40 in one cents. One cent, okay? You do not have to wait for the second bar to finish. Understand that. You don't let the second bar take out the high and continue to trade until it finishes, then, then buy. No, you buy instantly once it clears the high. That's the confirmation entry. The anticipation entry would be when you have more than an elephant bar, what I call the elephant bar plus. There's a little extra part on top of your elephant. This has gone past the definition of an elephant. If I take that top off, I still have an elephant. What's that top? I would say like 20%. If your stop has produced a bar where you say, if 20% of this green bar wasn't there, would it still be an elephant? If the answer is yes, you have an elephant bar plus, and you don't require to wait for this bar to finish, you're buying in the bar before the bar finishes, as long as it's relatively close to the end. So if it's a two minute bar, it's a minute and 30 seconds or something like that. It's not, you don't wanna buy into a big bar like that if it's formed in the first five seconds. That's not enough time. It's not enough data to make sure that move is real. All right. So assuming that you're not doing it right in the beginning of the bar's formation, you do not have to wait for this bar to finish. You can jump right into the bar before it finishes trading. That's the anticipation entry. Now, both are very powerful entries. You need both. You do not choose between which one you take. The market tells you which one you apply. You should not be doing confirmation on an anticipation elephant bar. You're getting in too late, all right? And in truth, if you think about it, your confirmation, put this little piece here. See this little piece? Put this on top, and you have the plus version of it. So they're both really the same thing. It's just that when does, when does this little piece happen? Does it happen to the side or does it happen on top? Does this, is this clear, guys? The little piece, the little 20% piece can happen on top of an elephant or happen after a regular elephant. Does that make sense? So in truth, it's really the same thing. You're playing the same. It's just that in one case, it's happening in the same bar, and the other case is a little more delayed. That little extra piece is happening to the right of it. Statistically speaking, anticipation entries are safer. That's right. Intuitively, you might feel like confirmation is safer because Conditionally, we feel safer when you don't act yet and you double check. We've been trained that way, which is actually statistically wrong. What's statistically right in trading and in life is the first first um, the first instinct the first choice right the first feeling 
that is statistically more accurate than, let me confirm to see if this is right. I don't know if you've experienced that in life, but that is in life and in trading. And I've always told you that trading is a microcosmic version of life itself. So you won't find anything different in trading than you will in your ordinary, everyday life. It's the same. All right. So we've got the, 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 the two ways to enter the elephant confirmation anticipation. Now let's go to tail, the tail bar. Now remember, a true tail bar, the majority of the bar is tail, and a very small portion of the bar is the body. Now the one we're going to work with is the green body, the green top, the bottoming tail bar with a green top. Okay? The confirmation, bottoming tail, the confirmation entry is the same as the elephant, where you have that's the event, and here's how you enter any subsequent bar that clears the high. That's your entry. Boom. You do not have to wait for the clearing bar to finish, even if it clears in the first five seconds of the second bar. It doesn't matter. You don't You've already got the power, which is the bar before. You don't need to see more. You don't need to confirm more other than let me see a little bit of continuation and boom. You don't need this more information from the second bar. The first bar has given you everything you need. All you need is that to see is to confirm that there's follow through. One penny is enough. It's follow through. Do you understand this? Confirmation entry. One penny above the high. And you don't need time. Okay? Now, here's the interesting thing. This is an interesting one. I don't see many traders doing this, actually. This is one of the reasons I wanted to do this with you today. They're not taking advantage of what I call the torpedo. The torpedo. There's the tail bar, and then there's the torpedo. All right, so if this is your normal tail bar, then your torpedo continues. See that? That's the torpedo. That's like the elephant bar plus, right? And this is just like the, the, the tail bar plus. This little piece here that you're buying is just happening on top of the bar. So if your little green tail, if your little, if your tail bar with a little green top stops being little green, boom, no more waiting. You don't need anything else. You don't need to see anything else. The tail bar was enough. Now you're getting more than a tail bar. This is your anticipation entry. Now, this is probably the least taken scenario of all guys, and it shouldn't be. I've, 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 I've called this the torpedo bar. I've also called it the hybrid bar because it starts to, it start, it's starting to gain qualities of a tail and an elephant. It's like it's a hybrid. You understand? Make sense? Yeah, okay. Now, hybrid bars or torpedoes or tail bar pluses, I don't care what you call it, to be honest with you, as long as you call it something. And as long as you know these bars are to be jumped into, not, there's no waiting on these bars. If they're, if they're happening at the right location, 
You don't wait. We've got the elephant bar, confirmation entry, anticipation entry. Now we have the bottoming tail bar, confirmation entry, anticipation entry. Let's go to the third item, which is your bull 180. The bull 180, the confirmation entry is boom, right there. So the portion of the green above the red is considered the plus portion of your green elephant, right? So you're buying above the red. That's confirmation entry. When you're buying, anytime you're buying above something, above the previous bar's high, you're using confirmation entry. That's the confirmation entry. Now, when do you get in above the red? One penny above is enough. You don't need any more confirmation. The green wiping out the red is all you need. This green bar has neutralized the negativity of the red bar next to it. Now, what's the anticipation? What if your red bar is extra red? Like, if I took 20% of the red, if I took 20% of the red away, it's still a bare elephant. This is a bear elephant plus. This is, a, this is more than an elephant. Well, in this case, I'm not going to require the green to take everything out. Boom. Anticipation entry. Right. There. So let me give you a percentage my adults out there. I would say 85% more or less. 85% back up the red is enough. Boom. If your red bar is taller than an elephant bar, it's got a little extra height to it. You don't have to require it to go all the way. 85% is enough. This is your anticipation entry on a bull 180. I guess I will have to answer that question for the rest of my life forever because I, I get asked it every single day. Does this work in all time frames? Everything I teach you works in every time frame. Confirmation and anticipation. The one thing I want, one minute and 30 seconds, no, no. Your entry bars do not need that, just so you understand, guys. Your entry bars don't need the time duration, okay? The event does, not the entries don't. In this case, you you know, just the fact that it got 85% all the way back up is, 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 is enough. Again, assuming that all of these things are happening in good locations, guys, right? You don't want to be buying a bull 180 way up in the sky, in heaven, way away from every major moving average after an eight bar run to the upside. You understand? So just you got to have it in a good location. We're not talking about location today, but you got to have it in a good location, all right? Okay. So we got this done. We Now, here's the thing I need you to really fully understand. Ah, uh, um, Roger's asking a very good question. Uh, Roger's asking, so is it a good play to enter in anticipation and add in the confirmation? It depends on the risk, yes. And I would say you want to be careful with that because the reason why you're getting in anticipation is because there's a chance that it could go far enough where confirmation is just too far away from your stop. Anticipation of confirmation usually does not affect where your stop is, right? So your stop is the same. 
So if the higher you're entering, the greater the risk to trade because the further you are from your protective stop. Right? So just be careful. It's possible. But it, yes, you're right, Roger. It depends on the risk. You can add on confirmation if the risk is not that much more, if you like. Remember, if you can name it, right, and the risk is not that great, then you can do it. So Roger was asking, can I also add on confirmation? Well, he's naming a confirmation entry event. It just depends on the risk. That's what I'm always a stickler for. If you can name it, then it's not a guess, it's not a thought, it's not a feeling. All right, so we're out of the woods with that. Now, let's risk assess it. If it doesn't work, will I get destroyed? If it doesn't work, will I need to seek counseling? If it doesn't work, will I want to throw my computer against the wall? Or will it be like, eh? Yeah, I'll get that back. I'll get that back. You understand? That's what you have to do. Name it and then risk assess it. All right. So we've got the elephant bar, the confirmation entry and anticipation. We've got the tail bar, confirmation entry and anticipation. We've got the bull 180, confirmation and anticipation. All right. Last one, last one is, okay, now when you see this, you know if it's in the right position, you know there's a possibility that you're going to get an RBI. You know this as the red bar is forming, all right? You know this as the red bar is forming. You know that if this red bar stays calm, doesn't get violent, you're watching this red bar form, it hasn't finished being, it hasn't finished being red yet, and like if it stays calm, if it doesn't grow too much, if it doesn't get violent on me, and it finishes in the upper part, this could be my RBI scenario. You're watching this. Now you're saying, if we clear the red, I'm in. That's what you're saying. And then you see it start here. And you're watching it. You're getting ready. It's growing. The green is actually growing back up the red. You see? And boom! Right there. One penny above that red. You don't need anything else. You don't need to wait. You don't need a filter. You don't need to say like, oh, let me wait five more cents. No. Boom. Right there. Confirmation entry. All right. That third bar does not have to finish. Okay, you're buying in that third bar before it finishes. That entry can happen in the first 15 seconds of the bar. I don't care. It doesn't matter. We've already seen enough. We don't need more. All right. All right. Now, that's the way we enter confirmation. Let's do anticipation. All right. Anticipation is when you have. Oh, I did that wrong color. This. Now, with something like that,
you can anticipate entry above the body, not above the tail or wick. Boom! Above the color, not the wick. That would be anticipation. You guys got it? You don't need to do the tail. If the red bar has a little tail up there, you can do the body before it takes out the high, which is the tail. That's the anticipation version. So when there's a tail, you can do the anticipation version. Now, let me give you a little caveat here. If the tail is incy, wincy, 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 like you got to squint your eye to see it, include it. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when there's, there's like a fairly decent distance between, difference between getting in above the high of the tail and getting in above the high of the body. Like, guys, I am training you to be size players. Do you understand? I'm training you to be size players. What do I mean by that? Eventually, your base lot's going to be a thousand shares. So when you guys say, I'm going to give it five cents more, with a thousand shares, that's a lot of money you're throwing out of the window. You understand? You're throwing $50 out of the window every time you give a stock an extra five cents. That's it, only 1,000 shares. Imagine when you start trading 5,000 share lots. Do you understand? You're throwing away hundreds of dollars every five cents. So you're being trained to where pennies matter. You understand? Pennies matter. Where you enter matters. When you don't stop out at the right place and, you, and instead you stop out six cents later, what if that was 5,000 shares? Six cents, 5,000 shares. That's $60 times five. What is that? That's a lot of money. That's what that is. And so think of just raising, the, raising your window and taking $300 and throwing it out on the entry and then taking another $300 and throwing it out of the window on the exit. That's what missing six cents is on 5,000 shares. These entry points matter. And the way you have to practice them on smaller baby lots first, 100 share lots, 200 share lots. You got to get good there. And then all I have to do later is just add a zero. Do you understand? Trading 100 shares is the same as trading 1,000 shares. It's just a zero. The action is the same. I could actually program your trading platform to trade 1,000, but to show you that you're trading 100, there would be no difference. The button presses, the, the actions are the same. And in fact, you should be trading based on the assumption that 100 is 1,000. So all of your results, you should be adding a zero to. If you made $65 on this trade, that's not $65. That's $650. Add the zero. If you've lost $40 on this trade, that's not $40 loss. That's a $400 loss. Add the zero. This adding the zero will sharpen you. It'll, it'll stop you from disrespecting the pennies. It'll stop you from disrespecting entering wrong, exiting wrong. It'll force you to become more precise because you're like, shoot, I just, instead of this being a $300 loss, it's now a $400 loss. I just added $100 to my loss by missing these few cents here. It'll make you a sharper trader. 